discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. That's funny. We're now hearing from the attorney for a New Mexico high schooler accused of murdering her newborn son by tossing him in a hospital trash can. He says his client didn't even know she was pregnant and alleges there may have been malpractice on the hospital's part. But not a single one of them told her that she was pregnant. Not a single one of them told her that uh, uh, we need to examine you. Body camera video of the January 27th incident has gone viral, showing police and doctors speaking with 19-year-old Alexi Treviso after the baby was found in a trash can. Um, in terms, I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, you do have to have the police involved. And that thing was crying. It came out with that thing. At the time, Treviso was admitted to an Artesia, New Mexico hospital for severe back pain. And she went to the hospital uh, thinking that she was suffering from low back pain and severe abdominal pain uh, and went there uh, and indicated on a pain scale of one to 10 that she uh, was at a 10. After cleaning a bloody bathroom Treviso had just used, a hospital staff member found the baby inside a trash bag. She put the baby in the trash can, and then she put another clean liner over the top of it. Oh, wow. Okay. So they looked, when they looked in there, it looked, there was no trash in there, but it right. was underneath the clean bag. The okay. baby's dead, okay? We have him in trauma too, but she killed the kid. Yeah, how old was the, how old was the baby? I don't know, it's full term. She just had it, she had it in the bathroom was what happened. The newborn baby died and Treviso was charged with first degree murder and tampering with evidence this month. This week, she was released on $100,000 bond ahead of her high school graduation on May 25th. But her attorney, Gary Mitchell, tells us she will not be attending. She's 19 years old. She's a high school senior graduates next week, although they're not going to allow her to go to her graduation because of the controversy in the community and uh, they just don't want to have any chaos. She's agreeable to that. Law and Crime Network reached out to Artesia High School for a comment. The district superintendent responded via email, quote, I am unable to make a comment on personal student matters. They asked very politely. Artesia is one of the finer school systems in the state of New Mexico. And, uh, and they are, and they at least honor uh, their protection of students. Uh, they're very good about that. And uh, they simply ask. And there was not an order or a command from the school as far as we know. They just ask that uh, she not be there so as not to generate any issues whatsoever. And so she agreed to that. But she took her last final and uh, is to receive her diploma. Mitchell says Treviso went back to school in January after giving birth, but after her arrest, only returned to take a final exam. He says she has a 3.8 GPA and has already committed to attend New Mexico State University in the fall. On top of that, he says she's never been in trouble before. She has absolutely no criminal record, not even a moving traffic offense, no juvenile record no suspension from school ever, no infraction at school, and uh, an honor student, and already admitted into college. And uh, uh, a member of the cheer team since she was a freshman in high school, a member of the choir, uh, just an all round top notch student and person. Uh, just never been in trouble. On January 27th, when she was admitted to Artesia General Hospital, Mitchell says Treviso didn't expect to give birth. So she is shocked whenever she delivers a baby. Uh, and then uh, the issue of what caused the baby's death is going to be one that's going to be litigated. I already have a, a real good idea what caused the baby's death. It had nothing to do with my client. She was not at fault. Mitchell says Treviso had spent four hours working out with her cheerleading team earlier in the day and was dehydrated. He says pregnancy didn't even cross her mind. There's no question that she thought she had been protected. Uh, there's no question that she had uh, wisely used birth control. Uh, she and her boyfriend. 
So, but obviously it didn't work. Upon arrival at the hospital, Mitchell says Treviso was loaded with medication, including Zofran, sodium chloride, and morphine. They gave her uh, major medication. Uh, some of that medication certainly dangerous to a unborn child or fetus uh, and uh, contraindicated if you're pregnant, certainly contraindicated if you're going to breastfeed later on. And uh, that medication was started without finding out whether or not she was pregnant. He says eventually hospital staff learned Treviso was pregnant but didn't tell her before she went to the bathroom. He argues she should have been monitored during this time. This is a classic instance that the female needs, feels the need to go to the restroom. Maybe we better check and make sure she's not delivering a baby. I mean, you just don't allow that kind of thing if you know what you're doing. They did, and they didn't bother to tell her. Mitchell also stresses Treviso gave birth alone. So this is a situation in which the hospital failed her, the nurses and doctors failed her. The officer, the medical investigator has failed her. When asked why Treviso put her baby in the trash can, Mitchell echoes what Treviso says in body camera video. Lexi, I told you about this. I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. I was scared. I was not crying or making. The baby was dead. She took her baby. I know that, and I'm not at liberty to get into that. I need to save that for our experts and stuff to discuss. And I really don't want to uh, tip off the state of New Mexico to what my client might say. Uh, but let me put it this way. Uh, people would be very pleased with the actions that she took and the way she handled the situation, despite the fact she's on major pain medication, is in total shock and in a state of panic. She still tried to do the right thing by her baby. I'll tell you that much. And that baby wasn't put in the trash right away. As Long Crime Network reported, an autopsy conducted by the Office of the Medical Investigator showed the baby's death was not consistent with a stillbirth, finding he had air in his lungs. Mitchell says the results can't necessarily be trusted. I'm obviously going to have another expert look at that. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, because I don't have much confidence in OMI. He alleges the hospital illegally released parts of Treviso's medical history, something that may be considered malpractice. I'm absolutely convinced that not only will we be able to show that she's totally innocent, but we'll be able to show uh, the uh, what some people might call malpractice that took place. And that's before we even get into the violations of HIPAA, which is a federal privacy act that protects all of us as patients and protects our medical records and or the doctor patient privilege in the state of New Mexico. Mitchell believes his client will be acquitted of the charges against her when more information comes out. And I don't intend to hold back in representing this young woman. She didn't deserve any of this. Uh, she uh, was an extremely good person, somebody you could be really proud of. And because of our attitude now about women's reproductive care and, and the way we treat women in this country, uh, it's now exposed her to a first degree murder charge. In New Mexico, a first degree murder charge could yield a life sentence. Child abuse resulting in death could mean an 18 year sentence. Lexi, have you watched the news of the girls that what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? In a shockingly similar case, Alexis Avelia, another New Mexico teenager, received a lengthy prison sentence this month after she threw her baby in a dumpster. But Mitchell says these two cases should not be compared. The parallels that are only drawn is because uh, they're women and uh, uh, they involve babies. In the Hobbs case, which is the one you're speaking of, uh, the uh, young woman in that case uh, was alleged to have placed her baby in a dumpster and that she knew the baby was alive and the baby lived. Uh, in our instance, uh, that's not what happened. Uh, the, the baby uh, w w was, uh, did not live long enough to uh, survive. And nothing due to no uh, the fault of my client.
Now, had she been rendered proper medical care? That's a different story, but she wasn't rendered proper medical care. We reached out to Artesia General Hospital for a comment on this story, but have not yet heard back. As for Treviso's future court dates, Mitchell tells us the next step is a jury trial. So far, a date has not yet been set. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.